Hello everyone, it's Ginger here and we are going to be doing a little mini series on um, colour palettes from the masters which is always something really interesting or at least I found really interesting is the kind of colour palettes that a lot of the high-end painters, some modern and some fairly ancient um, and some pretty famous paintings is what I'm going to be looking at. Now the interesting thing with colour palettes and especially with pastel colour palettes is that um, a lot of when we talk about the colour palettes of the masters we talk about what they have on their palette which is great because they then use those base colours and mix them to create the colours that you see in a painting. However, as a pastel artist, we can't really mix like that. You can't just stick your different pastels on a, on a palette and that's your base colours and you're going to magically mix them somehow to make the colours you need. That's not how pastel works. And um, like Edgar Degas, he had to think very carefully about what colours he was going to use because he was limited by the pastels that he was using. Now, in a lot of cases, there are ways around it in modern times. The inclusion of pan pastels has helped massively because you can pre-mix pan pastels before applying it to your paper. So you can pre-mix to the colour you want off to the side by blending two pieces, two colours together on a slightly slicker surface that doesn't really have much grain and then re-picking that powder back up on a soft tool and then applying it to your actual surface for with the desired colour. So nowadays, yes, you can mix pastels. You can also layer pastels in order to create the colours you're looking for, as most pastels are fairly transparent. However, it's still not the same. It's an additional amount of work and does make things very complicated. So pastel is very important when you're being able to pick your colours straight from the colour options you have. Now, I don't have a massive, massive selection. There are pastelists out there like Marla Baguetta who has a stunning array of pastels on her trays and that just, oh God, I wish I could have that. But what I do have is a fairly good selection and we're going to take a look at some of these masters and modern contemporary artists and some of these well-known pieces of works and see what kind of colour palettes they are pulling directly from pastels, which means we're picking colour palettes from the actual colours we visually see on the painting rather than the colours they used to mix and make the colours for those paintings. So what I'm doing is I've got a nine grid square um, which is 15 by 15 centimetres and my trusty Collins Big Book of Art which I have had for a very very long time. The book was a gift and I have always used it to kind of reference back to some paintings when I'm working, looking for colour, looking for inspiration, looking for marks. So it's an absolute excellent all-round book for this sort of thing. Um, I have loads of art books and if you're interested I can talk more about uh, my, art my art book collection and some of my favourites and what I use them for as well. So we are going to start with the first one. You can see I've bookmarked quite a few different paintings so I'm going to keep a lot of these videos around about five to ten minutes um, so you guys can kind of get a quick shot at seeing what I'm talking about and the colour palette without having to sit there for a massively long video because realistically you don't need that. So we're going to start with the very first bookmark I've put in and this is a fairly recognisable painting for most people. So here it is. I will, when I'm working on the palette, I will also put a digital copy up here um, so you can get a, a good look at it. So <clears throat> let's talk about this painting and the artist in particular. I've written some notes because I'm never going to remember everything. So we're going to start with the artist because that's the important one and also the time frame. So we're now talking about the, well, we're back in the 15th century. This painting was painted in 1434, so a fairly long time ago. But um, as for the period, a lot of paintings were portraiture and were done in oil. Now, there wasn't really a lot of pastel work um, back when you get a lot of the big named masters in art. So this is why we're having to, we're looking at it in the way we're looking at it now. The painting itself... I'm always rubbish at pronouncing this, I believe, is called the Arnolfini Portrait. And it's a portrait of a husband and wife, Giovanni Al Arnolfini. Um, and the reason this painting has become so popular is not just the amount of realism and detail, but also because of the amount of detail in this part here, which is the circular mirror on the wall and the reflection, to the point what, what they're saying is, is that if you zoom in on the reflection, you can actually see the people in the background 
um, the artist. I think there is a priest, I think, for some reason. I don't know if this is maybe a hand fasting ceremony. Um, a bit late in the day, considering her condition at that point. But, you know, it's quite an important painting because of the amount of detail and also his bold use of colours. So let me give you a little bit of synopsis on the artist. So the artist himself is Jean van Eyck who was a pioneering Flemish painter of the early Northern Resistance. Oh, Resistance? Renaissance. Is it Renaissance? Yeah, it's Renaissance. And he was kind of renowned for his mastery of oil painting, and as I said earlier, specifically his detail and how much detail there is in this painting is unbelievable. He was active in the 15th century, and as I've pointed out already, this painting is 1434. And he is celebrated for works like this painting, and also for another one which I might do a palette for later on, and then maybe compare the two which is called the Ghent Altarpiece. And this showcase, both of these paintings kind of showcase his really intricate intention to detail. Um, he does also like to play a lot with light and symbolism, which is why you see a lot of people talking about the reflection, the faces, the direction they're looking, where her hands are, where they're laying, and also the colour palette as well. His techniques with oil glazes and naturalistic details kind of influenced quite a lot of generation, the next generations of artists. Um, and his work captured both the kind of material richness um, and spiritual intensity of the era, which is what I mentioned when I said about the priest in the background, leaving a lasting legacy in Western art. And he did influence a lot of Western art for a very long time. Now, this painting in particular is the Arnold Finney portrait, as I've mentioned, um, and it uses quite a rich palette, but it's fairly well balanced between your kind of neutrals and your more bolder colours, which add this beautiful pop and intensity. It's almost as if you've drawn a line down the middle of the painting and gone all your bold colours and your richness is around his lady wife and all his darker, more sombre colours are around himself. And I have absolutely no idea why he did this in this, this really particular split. But you can see also the highlights he's used when highlighting with light. So you've got the light on the chandeliers all on one side, light on his face all on one side, light on his hand, the inside of his hand and the palm is all very dark and light on one side. And you can see the detail of the veins in his hand and the ring that he's wearing. And the same with the lady. She's a bit more flatter because she's more in the light, which isn't fully realistic. Bear in mind that the window is actually behind him. Well, it's actually forward of him. And you can see that in the smaller piece here, that it, the window is kind of more behind him there and mostly on her. So you've got these really bright pop of colours. So you've got the green gown, which is the central female figure, the wife, which stands out really vividly against these really earthy kind of browns. There isn't a lot of black. Now, there was a lot of black in oil painting back then. It was an easy colour to produce. But the actual kind of robe that he is wearing, and it's an over robe because you can see the collar of what he's wearing underneath here, is a really rich brown. And that's kind of set off with these kind of warm red tones that he's got everywhere. And then the rich red brown tones that he's used in the wood and also the darker colours and tones and reds that he's used in the mirror. This is then really offset by the green of her gown, the blue, the gold and the white of her headdress, which really contrasts quite well between the two sides. There's a lot of highlights, there's a lot of subtle shading, which really add the dimension. It kind of gives you the whole, that they're standing forward, that he's slightly forward of her, that she's lit and he's not, that the bed is in the background. It, it, it kind of just sets the scene really nicely. Now, whilst this is typically um, classed as a portrait, I'm more interested in the kind of landscaped um, scene that this actually creates. Now, we're going to take a look now and we're going to take a look at the colour palette directly from the painting, which we will now apply to our nine grid. So I'm going to pick the nine most common colours in this painting for us to get a good look at. So I'm going to move the painting over the painting, I'm going to move the book with the painting over. So I'm going to move you to here. I've got all my palettes, you can't see them, but they're all lined up over here um, so that I can just nip in and out and get colours as I need. And then we've got my grid here. So we've got these nine squares to fill. And I think we'll go for um, some of the more interesting colours. And the biggest colour on this page, unbelievably, is the green. Um, it's such a super saturated, bold colour. And that's, I really want to get that down. So I'm looking for one that's kind of going to be good enough to 
going to showcase the, the different tones because there's a couple of different tones in the green because of the shadowing but actually at the end of the day this is a fairly good match this color so i'm going to put this here this is um just card just slightly satin coated card stock there's now a fruit fly in here as well don't know why go away which gives me a nice kind of soft even um surface to to apply the pastel to without actually having to really think about it too much and then i'll probably blend this in slightly with my fingers as well but let's make sure we've got plenty applied so i'm going to pop this down to the side we'll take a look at those later so i'm just going to blend this out the reason being is that this has got a lot of warm tones to it this green but you don't really see them until you blend it there we go look at that it's such a gorgeous green isn't it absolutely stunning now we've got a lot of these really rich reds um and they're quite dark but they do have a slightly kind of warmer orangey pop to them and i'm wondering whether or not because of that that we go for something like this which is a really lovely color it's a like a dark red kind of brick color um, and we'll pop this next to the green. They are not, they're in a bit of a weird place in the, the colour wheel. And if you think about it, what are the three main colours? Red, green and blue. Which are the main colours of light, which is weird. There is yellow in there as well. But you've got a lot of primary colours in this painting. But a lot of the tones are very earthy. Even the red, you know, is, is a really earthy red colour. It's not, it's not got blue tones in it at all. It's, it's a very orangey red. Right, so I'm getting fingerprints everywhere. I really should be more careful. Sorry, not the camera. Right, so we've got the red and we've got a green. Great start. Now the blue is going to be a little bit harder. It does have a slight red undertone. I'm wondering if this might be a better colour or I go for something a bit more neutral. I know they look really similar. They're not. One's slightly lighter than the other. If I turn them that way, you'll be able to see. And if I look at it like that, I'm actually thinking that the darker blue might be a better option. I actually think both are in it, but I'm going to go for the darker blue. Um, I'm going to stick this here so this is a warm tone blue that he's used so just like the green and the red he's used quite a warm warm tone palette Right, so there's a blue. Now, let's look at the other colours that we've got going on. We actually have quite a significant amount of grey, and it is a yellow grey. And that's all this here, going all the way up. And you can see he's made it dark and then light as it comes down, which is really lovely. But we want to kind of look at what colour this actually is. And I think it's more of a kind of neutral. So I'm thinking it's more like maybe... This, although that might be too light, so I might need to go a bit darker. I'm going to bring this tray over to have a look and see. Because this is quite a... See, that's, no, that's going the wrong way. No. Nope. Might be that I'm, I may not have an appropriate colour for this. And this is the kind of thing why I'm looking at this and the use of pastels and this sort of thing is that you're never really sure and it's quite a difficult colour that that he's got because it's such a weird yellow colour like a yellow grey and I'm still kind of keep coming back to this one which is a neutral yellow, brown yellow which kind of makes sense because of the brown tones that are in this so let's you see that yeah let me see that to that you've got the darker yellow grey here as well but that's more of a 
Oh, it's more of an appropriate colour for that. And there's a brown. I'm sure that's a green, I don't know why that's in there. Stick that in there. I'm fairly sure that's a blue and that's escaped from somewhere. Yeah, I don't really have an appropriate colour, I think. Most of these are like a, a brown. I'm thinking this is a, this might, see, this is too blue. When you look at that against the painting, you can see how blue that colour is. So yeah, I think we might stick with this for the minute. Because I like that. I like how that works. Maybe get anything in there. I'm just looking at the oranges and seeing whether or not maybe one of the orange tone browns might be better. But no, I don't think they are. Right, let's use this because this is a really gorgeous colour. So you can see the kind of honey grey tones that are in this. Done this in a wee bit. So it's a really nice kind of almost golden colour, this one. And it's also similar for the skin tone as well. And you see the kind of skin tone that he's got going on. You've got some peach, and I do think I need to add some of that in. And this also will tie in with this the fur on her on her dress. And also, it ties in with kind of the gold on this. But the next colour I want to get down is this, which is our um, really rich brown. And I've got the perfect colour here for this, which is uh, this brown here. And you can see it's a gorgeous colour. It's a red and orange tone brown. It's super warm. Pop that to the side. And you can see that from all the wood here. Now, we do have a darker colour than that. Let's see if I can find, yeah, this one. And now, that's great for the wood, but he does use an even darker red-brown for his overcoat, which we're going to put here. You can see this here. This is a brown. I don't know how it's going to come out on the camera, but it is a brown. It's not a black. I actually don't have um, any blacks other than charcoal in my collection, just because I don't really like the use of it. You can also tell it's a sommelier because it is super powdery and super dry. I'm just going to scrub this in my finger so we've got this colour. There we go. Look at that. So you can quite clearly see these are our colours that are coming out of this painting. So we're now going to delve in a little deeper and start pulling out some other colours that we can see. Um, just thinking, what direction do I want to go in, is the question. So that's a pretty dark green. Green. I'm looking for kind of more of a, more of a kind of grey gold colour. I know I had some somewhere. It's annoying me now. Because these ones that I've got here are not suitable at all. It's so annoying when you can't find the colour you want. It's got no purple. I think I've got purple in here and a blue in here by accident, but we'll work it out. Yeah, like that. Oh, is that not... The yellow brown, isn't it? This one, just looking at what I've got to the here. 
this might be a little bit closer, which is our, this is our yellow brown, and that is a lot closer to this color at the top. So we're gonna use this. This is a really great color because it's quite neutral. So unlike the really warm browns, this is a really, really neutral brown. And you can see the difference between it and the other two browns that we've got. It is still a warm brown, don't get me wrong, but it is a completely different tone. And it has a lot more yellow in it than it does the reds, which is in the other two browns that he's used. Like that. Right. Now, where do I want to go with here? Well, what I do want to do is I want to capture more of the yellow, which is a blue yellow, almost like a lemon colour, which is in the gold work on the chandelier here and is being picked up here by the fur. Um, so what do we want to, how do we want to do that? It's quite a weird, it is quite a weird colour. It's more of a kind of goldy colour. I think that might not be... No, I think that's going to be too, too yellow. It needs to be quite, it needs to be on the blue side, which is a little unusual because it's only the really only cool yellow that he's actually got in this. I think, yeah, this is a perfect colour for this. So we'll bring this one in here. And you'll see what I mean. It's what I refer to as a dirty yellow. So it is a neutral yellow again. Another more neutral colour that he's used. I mean, he really has let the bold colours really sing but kept the rest of the colours really neutral. So you can see this is the colour that's in the fur and in the chandelier. Which is our kind of blue, yellow, gold. It's got a lot of greys in it as well. It has a little bit of warmth to it, so it's not completely in the blue tones. Right, so that leaves us with what are we picking for our last colour? Now, in the full painting, as you can see from what I can show you here, um, you can see a little bit more of what's going on. And you can see that there's a dog, um, there's clogs on the floor, which is the shoes. Um, you can see the kind of orangey brown of the wood at the window. So you can see a bit more of the kind of colour tones that's going on and the kind of yellowy, warmy tone lights. And we might quite like to get the warm wood tone in that he's got for this window because it is another standout feature. If you moved your eyes across the painting, these are the things that you're going to be picking out as you look around. Now, it is an orangey colour. So I'm gonna see what I've got that's kind of in the right range because it's a cross between a yellow and an orange as it kind of wanders into brown. I'm thinking this might be, because it's quite an orange, orangey brown colour. So it's like this one, but it's a little bit more brown. Thinking along the lines of this, actually. Oh yeah, that's good. Right. So it's more like this one, which has got a lot of red tones in it. Oh, sorry, not the camera. Right. So there is our colour palette from this painting, the portrait of the Arnolfini, Giovanni Arnolfini and his wife by Jean van Eyck. And you can see there is a lot of warm tones in this, um, very little cold tones at all. Um, the yellow only has a hint of it, the blue is on the warm side as well, the green's on the warm side, uses very vibrant oranges and reds um, on the warm side, and even the browns that he's used and the dark colours are all on the warm side. So there's a lot of warm tones, and that was fairly atypical of the kind of painting style of that period, especially with oils. And I'm not going to necessarily attribute it down to the minerals they were using to create the oil paints at that time, because they did have access to bluer tone minerals to make oil paint. 
It's just that Van Eyck's take on it was he liked to paint with a lot of more warm tones. And you'll see that when I do the palette for his other painting, the Gen Alter piece, um, and you can see the, the he's used a very, very similar palette for this to that one as well. So look forward to seeing the two colours on this one. Um, thank you for joining me today. Hopefully that's been really good. I will be keeping the rest of these considerably shorter um, so that you can kind of watch these on the hoof as you go, just to kind of give you an insight into working with colour palettes from the masters and how to bring that in when you're working with pastels and therefore kind of limited on your colour range, but how to then make that work for you. And as you can see, this is a great palette. Absolutely love the colours in this. Um, if you're doing landscapes, there's a lot of colours here that you could use in a landscape without too much issue. So thank you for joining me. Ta-ta for now. And I will see you all soon.